Hello, everybody. We're going to be proving several things over the next few days, um, and it's a pretty common experience to see a proof, and it feels very direct. All the steps lead to where they're supposed to lead, and you say, oh, yes, okay, I see that that is true. Uh, but it's often very hard to understand how could someone have come up with that on their own. Um, so that's what we're going to look at over the next couple of days is like, yes, you will see some proofs and you'll be able to reproduce them. Um, but hopefully you'll get a sense for how you plausibly could have come up with something like that on your own. So we'll start, uh, we'll start at the simplest place we can. Let's try and uh, generalize some helpful facts that we already know. Um, so we know a bunch of useful things about right triangles, for example. Um, if we label these A, B, C, uh, like one fact we know is sine theta equals opposite side over hypotenuse. Useful fact. Um, another thing we know is the Pythagorean theorem. Also a useful fact. Um, but the problem is these useful facts only apply to right triangles. What happens if we have a triangle that isn't right? Um, so the angles don't necessarily have a right angle in them. Um, let's go ahead and label the sides, and then we'll set up what's our recipe for deriving new results. So we'll label this side A and B and C. Um, it's often conventional to label the angle across from a side with a capital version of the same letter. So lowercase a is the side length, uppercase a is the angle. So here's capital B, here's capital C. Um, I know my lowercase and capital look identical. Uh, you'll just have to let context tell you which one's an angle and which one's a side length. Okay, so let's follow this recipe. So usually when you're trying to derive new results, you'll make a concrete situation that the math describes. Um, and this one will make more sense when we're trying to prove a particular result. Um, then we're gonna add things that connect to math we know. So here we have a general triangle and the whole point of what we're doing is that we don't know very much math that connects here. Um, so what could we add that would make this situation have uh, math that connects to it? A really easy thing that we could do, we do this in a different color, would be to drop, is this a different color? Ish. Uh, drop a vertical line. So now we have two right triangles. And what's great about this is we can apply a lot of math we know about right triangles to the situation now. Um, the problem is we can't, really describe these right triangles without adding more variables because we don't have a variable for this height. We don't have a variable for these two separate pieces of this entire length A. So let's add in some new variables. We'll call this one H. Uh, we could call this here X. Um, we could call this one a different variable like Y or something else, but we it's a good idea to reuse variables when you can. So rather than describing this one with a completely new variable, I'm noticing it is the full length A minus that length X. So I can describe this as, whoops, A minus X. All right, at this point, uh, don't try and be too directed about it. Uh, just write down a whole bunch of math facts that you know about these right triangles. You, sh you should write at least five. Uh, go ahead, pause the video, um, or you know we will have done this in class already. Go. Okay, here's what I came up with. Um, all I did was I used some simple Sokotoa things to describe sine and cosine of this angle and this angle, and I used the Pythagorean theorem to do both of those right triangles. Okay, so we're at the next stage. We wrote some equations. Let's start combining them. Um, and you could combine them by isolating a variable and setting two of the same variables equal to each other. You could use elimination. You can always use algebra. Um, but we have a certain goal here. We were interested in coming up with new facts about the general triangle. Um, and so the only variables that we want to end up with are A's and B's and C's. So if we were going to combine some equations and end up with an H in there, that's not very helpful because the H isn't really about the original triangle. H was the thing that we introduced just so that we could connect in math we knew. So we're not just trying to combine equations. We're trying to combine equations and then we're gonna try and eliminate H and X because those were the things that we introduced. Okay, so go ahead and just see what different things you can come up with by trying to combine these equations in different ways, eliminating X's and H's. Pause the video if you want. 
Okay, so one thing I did, or one thing I saw here in these first two, um, the only variable we want to get rid of in either of these equations is the h. So if we isolate h, we'll have h is c times sine b, and also h is b times sine c. Those two h's are the same as each other, so we can rewrite this as c sine b equals b sine c, which has a nice kind of symmetry to it. Um, if, you, if this doesn't look familiar to you, this is a slightly different form of a famous thing called the law of sines. Um, the conventional form for the law of sines we'd get by dividing by the sine of b and the sine of c on both sides. So if we divide by sine of b on both sides, we've got c b sine c over sine b. Then if we divide by sine c on both sides, we've got c over sine c equals b over sine b. And that also has a very nice symmetry to it. And if you think about what it's describing about this original triangle, it's just saying if I take a side length and divide it by the sine of the opposite angle, that's the same as if I take a different side length and divide it by the sine of the opposite angle. Um, and this can be a helpful identity to use sometimes uh, if you're trying to simplify an equation or solve for unknowns in a triangle. Um, if You might notice we're missing A here, and the reason we're missing A is because the line we drew cuts the angle A in half. If I'd drawn another uh, perpendicular line somewhere else that doesn't cut A, then we'd have another triangle with angle A available and we could add the third piece, which would be a over sine a. Okay, what else could we have done? I'm noticing that these two equations both have an h squared in them, so let's set the h squareds equal. I'll subtract c squared from, or I'll subtract x squared from both sides to get c squared minus x squared is h squared. Then if I isolate h squared here, I'll have b squared minus a minus x squared. Um, the problem is I still have this x here, and I want to get rid of the x somehow. So let's use algebra and simplify. So expanding this term and then distributing the negative sign, I've got that. And I'm noticing I've got an opposite x squared on both sides. Um, and I still have one x left over. So let's go back and see how could we substitute in something else for this x. Um, I'm noticing right away this one appears to have an x and then things that are only acceptable original variables. So if I isolate x here and substitute in, that gives me c squared equals b squared minus a squared plus 2 times a times, and then this is going to be c cosine b, if you imagine multiplying the c. And this is a slightly different form of another important result called the law of cosines. Whoops, the law of cosines. If we wanted to make the law of cosines look a little bit more like the Pythagorean theorem, we could reorganize it a bit. So I could have a squared plus c squared by moving that over there. Um, and then let's subtract 2ac cosine b. And then that equals b squared. Something to notice here is if this angle B were 90 degrees, we'd have a right triangle. And if you plug in 90 degrees, cosine of 90 degrees is 0. And so this term would drop out. And we would have A squared plus C squared equals the hypotenuse B squared. So this turns into the Pythagorean theorem. Um, but we have this term that's sort of like a correction term. And there's this nice symmetry where the angle here corresponds with this side length. And these two side lengths are both present in this kind of correction term. OK, so I hope that the original recipe has made it clear how it's possible to derive new results if you add things that let you connect in math you know, write a bunch of facts, and then combine them trying to eliminate the things that you'd originally added. Uh, next time, we'll see how we can extend this to prove even more significant results.